333. The Fear of Freedom. Calcine Report number 212, March 1983. One of the great fears of the 20th century is of freedom. Freedom is honoured in name, but not in fact. Modern man today wants what Dr. Elgin Grossclose has so aptly termed the riskless society, a society in which failure is impossible, poverty and problems are abolished, and causality and consequences never prevail. In the trials of Christian schools and churches at which I am regularly a court witness, I find that implicit in the position of state and federal officials is the belief that the unregulated society is capable of producing only chaos. An imaginary scenario is often cited in conversation about the abuses which could ensue. What is the answer to that question? Very simply, it is true that abuses can ensue. In one state where a large number of homeschools exist, one family has done little to educate their two children. However, all other homeschools are producing superior to very superior students, whereas, given the same number of children in a public school sampling, the results are usually very bad, and the illiteracy rate growing. Likewise, I have encountered weak Christian schools, but, compared to the state schools, the Christian schools are dramatically superior. Clearly, educational freedom has produced superiority in the Christian schools, whereas regulation has led to inferiority and incompetence in the state schools. Moreover, as the regulations have increased, the quality has decreased. In striving for a problem-free answer, the states have relied on regulations, and these have only increased the problems. The same applies to other realms, including the economic. Recently, as oil prices began to fall, alarm was expressed by one scholar in the press. Falling oil prices would create serious dangers. Automobile manufacturers have borrowed billions of dollars from the banks to retool their plants to produce small, fuel-efficient cars. Now that investment is threatened, it may spell trouble for both the banks and the automobile manufacturers. New companies have arisen to make coal and wood stoves for homes. Their future may now be uncertain. Our foreign policy will be affected if, for example, Mexico and Saudi Arabia, to name only two countries, find their oil income cut. The fear was expressed in America's major daily paper that widespread bankruptcies could follow our oil glut and a collapsing oil price, not a stimulus to the economy. The regulators thus see disaster when prices go up and disaster when prices go down. In fact, they see only disaster where the free market prevails. Their only confidence is in their own regulations. They have a religious fear of freedom. A philosophy or faith which sees the state as God will fear any and all diminutions of the state's controlling and regulating power. It will fear freedom as the obvious road to hell. Those, however, who believe that this is God's creation and that freedom allows God's ordained laws for every realm to prevail more readily will welcome freedom and change as necessary to progress and as the surest defence against the tyranny of man. Where man plays God and seeks to predestinate each and every realm in terms of his own counsel and plan, disaster ensues. Man's plan runs counter to God's plan, and only God's order can prevail. The world is moving into the greatest economic crisis of history. It is a religious crisis, the product of man's efforts to play God and to control all things. For humanistic man, freedom is anathema because it runs counter to scientific planning and control. The growing crisis is thus a religious one and we must see it as God's judgment on a false and rival order. The crisis must be seen as good news, as evidence that God is at war, that the wages of sin in any sphere are always death, and that every tower of Babel man erects has a common destiny, disaster and confusion. The Lord is at work. Let the people rejoice.